More now on the conflict in Israel and Gaza. After six days of fighting, more than 100 Palestinians are dead, according to Hamas. Israel says three of its nationals have been killed. Both sides have insisted they'd welcome a diplomatic solution. Well, the EU Foreign Affairs Chief, Lady Ashton, spoke a short time ago in Brussels and called for a halt to the violence. In our debate today, we deeply regretted the loss of life on both sides. We believe the attacks must end immediately or even more innocent civilians will suffer. We're calling for an urgent de-escalation and the cessation of hostilities. In this respect, we support the mediation efforts of Egypt and other parties. I have myself been in regular contact with uh, a number of different people, including the Israeli Prime Minister, the Palestinian Prime Minister, the Arab League, Egypt, the UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, and the Foreign Minister of Turkey, amongst others. I'll continue to work with all our partners to help to bring about a de-escalation of the situation to protect civilians and to work for a rapid ceasefire. You've heard me say many times before that a long-term solution for Gaza and moving towards the resolution of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is a necessity and it's very important to help stabilize the entire region. Well, joining me now to discuss this is Rachel Shabby, the author of Not the Enemy, Israel's Jews from Arab Lands, a book on Israel's Oriental Jews. And also in the studio is Orlando Radici, the foreign editor of the Jewish Chronicle. And joining us from our central London studio is Sharif Nashasibi, who writes for the Palestine Telegraph and one of the, was one of the co-founders of Arab Media Watch. Thank you all very much for joining us. Um, come to you first of all, Rachel, as you're sitting next to me. Um, it, it's sounding slightly more optimistic tonight in that both sides are talking about the prospect of a ceasefire. What do you make of the mood music that we're now hearing? It's definitely more optimistic than it has been in the last six days and uh, certainly both sides have got an interest in uh, de-escalation at the moment and um, would be able to walk away um, claiming some sort of victory. The trouble still is that there is not enough international pressure being placed on Israel to de-escalate at the moment. Um, there is still um, almost unconditional Western support for Israel to that it has a right to defend itself and all the pressure is on Hamas and on the Egyptian government to pressure Hamas, Hamas to de-escalate without seeing an equivalent amount of uh, pressure being placed upon Israel to do the same. Well let's get the perspective of Sheriff um, on that. Um, what do you make of the, the voices from the international community? I, I suppose most prominently we've heard from Barack Obama saying that the rockets have got to stop coming out of, of Gaza without sending the same message to the Israelis? Well, I, I think the problem is that, you know, everyone is talking about the need for a ceasefire, but a ceasefire on its own is not a solution. It is just a small plaster on a wound that will continue to fester. It, you, the ceasefire has to be accompanied. Uh, firstly, it has to be a long-term ceasefire. It has to be accompanied by UN monitors on the ground. It has to accompany the lifting of the blockade on Gaza um, and international investment into Gaza. Um, a ceasefire on its own is just going to bring, bring us to the status quo ante, which is an unacceptable situation. Uh, Ban the UN Secretary General has said that the, the blockade of Gaza has caused unacceptable suffering, and that's true. We can't just revert to that situation. It has to be a much longer term and broader solution than, than simply a ceasefire that could well be broken if the causes of, that, of the violence are not addressed. What are your thoughts on that, Orlando? I mean, in these situations, the talk always becomes about stopping the violence instantly. But, of course, the, the problems have been there for so long, nothing will change. Of course, this is deja vu. We've been here before. Um, and this is another a piece in the cycle of violence that just seems to go on and on. Um, um, on the issue of uh, not enough international pressure on Israel, I think Barack Obama and William Hague were quite right to point out that Israel has a right to defend itself. I think what a lot of people don't realize is that people in southern Israel live under and have been living under a barrage of rockets um, more or less constantly for um, at least two years. Uh, Israel, um, in Operation Cast Lead, more or less neutralized Hamas's um, missile arsenal. And uh, now, it, since, since then, it is, Hamas has been building up its uh, weapons stockpile. So what we are seeing now is um, Hamas using that weapons stockpile to in influence uh, the region and to exert its influence over regional politics. Um, Sharif, what is the reason for this constant bombardment of rockets out of Gaza? I mean, we've heard, I've 
interviewed lots of people over the past few days who say that they're like fireworks, you know, they don't have much of an impact, although obviously from the Israeli perspective, it terrorizes a large number of people. W what is the, the point, if not to provoke Israel into the sort of action that has now happened? Well, I, there's, there's, there's two issues here. I mean, firstly, the rockets are a, a, a fairly useless response to frequent Israeli attacks on Gaza. I mean, people forget that Gaza is, is under frequent attack by Israel regardless of rocket fire. The other reason is that, you know, I, while I'm against attacks against civilians, whoever they are, um, the sad fact is that the world does not pay attention to Gaza unless and until rockets are fired. And I think, you know, people in Gaza have realized this sad fact. And it's a morbid dynamic that needs to change. People need to focus on Gaza for the suffering, the daily suffering that people face, not just when rockets are fired. Because if that continues, that then, then militants in Gaza will continue to see rocket fire as a way to bring attention. And that should not be the way to bring attention. But unfortunately, the world turns a blind eye until we get these flare-ups of violence. Okay. Um, people in Gaza are, are living in, in inhumane conditions on a daily basis, even when there isn't violence. It's a good point, isn't it? Rachel, it, it gets in the headlines when the situation becomes like this, but prior to, to it escalating to this level, it, it's not in the headlines, it's not on the radar. Yeah, I think that's right. And when people like uh, Obama and William Hague say that Israel has a right to defend itself, of course it does. I mean, nobody deserves to have rockets falling on them and their children. Israelis don't and Palestinians don't. And that's exactly the point, that it's completely asymmetrical condemnation. You know, even while we're seeing pictures um, of, of Gaza being bombarded by rockets, we're hearing international leaders say Israel has a right to defend itself and Hamas must, must stop its rockets. And actually, we, we need to rewind this situation back to its causes, which is 1948, with the war that created Israel and also displaced Palestinian refugees. 1.6 million of them are now stuck in the Gaza Strip, which is sealed, has been occupied. Nobody can get in or out, and it's obviously suffering. So it's not a surprise that people from the Strip are going to be resisting that sort of assault. And um, it's not going to stop either unless we address those causes and, and what what's the what are your answers Orlando in, in addressing those causes in tr trying to unlock this situation well for a start I don't think I think rewinding to 1948 doesn't get anyone anywhere um, we need to deal with the situation as it is now um, uh, Egypt's intervention um, um, hosting ceasefire talks as we speak um, is a positive development I think um, as uh, your speaker mentioned, investment in Gaza will be a positive step forward in the longer term once the cease ceasefire is brokered. Um, if a diplomatic solution can be found, then ultimately allowing more trade from between Gaza and the, the states around it, Egypt and Israel, will also help alleviate the problem. But ultimately, um, Hamas, which currently governs Gaza, not completely because there are other militants that uh, uh, take their own actions independently. Um, its charter is ultimately to destroy Israel. So this is this is a problem. We have a group that who who is essentially bent on Israel's destruction. This is this is in their founding charter. Uh, and how does that ever result, um, Sharif, in a situation where they can coexist side by side? Well, look. The fact is, Hamas in the past has respected ceasefires. It has previously, uh, and on numerous occasions, said that it accepts uh, the idea of a long-term truce with Israel. And as much as Israel says that it will not deal with Hamas, it does deal with Hamas. Um, just one recent and obvious example is the release of, of the Israeli soldier Gilad Shalit. So it can deal with Hamas when it wants to. Um, and I, I just don't think there is the, the willingness on Israel's side. I mean, they, they, they are trying to bomb Hamas to oblivion and then expect them to... Uh, to you know, rein in other militant groups in terms of their rocket fire. It just doesn't make sense. You, the, the, in, in this flare-up and in the last Israeli invasion of Gaza, the predominant victims are women and children. Um, Israel has no need or right to defend itself from Palestinian women and children. They are not the threat here. Israel doesn't have the same issues with the West Bank, though, does it? It's particular to the, to the Gaza Strip and the Hamas leadership. Actually, Palestine, the, the, the Israel has exactly the same issues in the West Bank because it is, it is the occupying power in the West Bank and in the Gaza Strip. It, there are the same, the, on the negotiating table, there are similar issues. 
And the West Bank is in, is in also a terrible state because it is under Israeli military rule. So yes, there are, there are parallels. You know, both, both occupied territories need to, 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 to be liberated and, and, and people need to, to live freely and with dignity. They cannot live. This is the longest military occupation in modern history. It, it cannot go on, neither in, Gaza, in the Gaza Strip or the West Bank. Rachel? I, I would have to agree with that. I mean, the trouble with um, Israel's actions is that it's caught in this perpetual cycle of thinking that the only way it can guarantee its safety and its survival is to be the military aggressor in the region. Um, this operation was primarily designed to, um, as, as a deterrent, meaning that Israel wanted to take out uh, the weapons that Hamas has been stockpiling in the last few years, in fact, since the last war in 2008, 2009. Um, but, but that, but those those weapons are only going to accumulate once there, if once there is a ceasefire. I mean, the situation is obviously going to continue until the root causes are addressed and until Israel sort of changes this mindset of thinking we'll only survive if we're the aggressors. Um, that clearly isn't working. It hasn't worked for 67 years. They need to change the record. And, and just a final thought then from you, Orlando. I mean, Israel says that this operation is about improving security for Israelis. Do you think that Israelis, particularly the million Israelis who are in the, the zone that's affected by these rockets, feel safer today than they did two weeks ago? I believe they do. Um, the Israelis that I've spoken to, that I spoke to um, in the last week um, when I was in Israel, um, are desperate for some operation to remove the, the daily uh, threat to their lives and to their livelihoods. Um, they, the Israeli operation has actually um, taken out a, a large number of long-range missiles uh, in Gaza. So that it is actually achieving that objective. So hopefully that um, operation will um, create a, a more peaceful situation, in, in, at least in the immediate future. If Hamas can't fire rockets at Israel, Israel won't retaliate. Orlando Radici, Rachel Shabi and Sharif Neshasibi, thank you all very much for joining us and sharing your thoughts this evening. Thank you.